Welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my path to the OCP. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at BrainPan. Uh, BrainPan is another vulnerable VM that's hosted over on VulnHub. Uh, it's listed as one of the uh, ones to look at for your path to OCP. And so far, what we have set up right now is we have our Kali install back here running. You can see that we have the BrainPan VM running. And I've already identified the IP address for BrainPan on my network here. And that's going to be 192.168.1.173 for this um, video. Um, I have not looked at BrainPan yet. I have no idea where we're going to start. But let's start off with our basic enumeration, right? So with our basic enumeration, I'm going to minimize that VM. Come back over here to my Kali Linux. Let's run a simple MMAP and see what's out there on this box. Keep it really simple. Light on network and see what comes back to us. All right, so right off the bat, we get two ports that uh, come back to us. Um, I will make one note, when you boot up BrainPan, uh, it does show you a, a Ubuntu um, logo. So I'm kind of assuming, without digging deep right now, that it may be a version of Linux, um, and possibly Ubuntu based on what I saw in the boot up. Um, looking at some of these basic results right here, uh, port 10,000 on Linux box to me usually means uh, webmin or some other type of management and from the name it gives you it says sensor management so we can take take a look at that I don't know what abyss is uh, but we can take a look at that as well so let's uh, let's try to go to port 10,000 on our machine to see what's there and we're going to open up a browser set and we're going to take a look see what's sitting on that port 10,000 I'm assuming it's webmin that's the only reason I'm using my browser right now um, but you know what happens when you zoom, right? So let's see what comes up. Interesting. So it's definitely not Webmin, but it looks like something about safe coding practices. Uh, looking through here, top vulnerabilities. None of this stuff is clickable. Uh, I'm assuming it might be an image or something. And Interesting, Veracode. So Veracode is a company out there. They do, uh, they're do. they well known for their security uh, testing tools for dynamic um, security testing and static code analysis. Their tools will basically take your project, analyze your code, tell you where there's a vulnerability, and allows the developer for quicker um, resolution time. And then if you already have compiled code, they can use their dynamic tool, which will run like the same type of attacks and attacker would use against the tool to identify vulnerabilities. So let's take a look at the source here and see if there's anything else interesting. All right, so simple source. Basically, they're just calling that image file that's sitting on the server. Um, nothing's jumping at me here. But let's see if there's any other services sitting on that port, like if there's any other data uh, in the web directory. And to do that, we'll do some web enumeration using like Nikto or our Derby. Um, so we're gonna jump over to our terminal here. And our terminal, you know, from our a uh, couple of videos ago, I created some uh, static, um, some scripts basically that could do our enumeration for us. So if we do cat web enum, you can see what I have in here. Basically, you're going to ask for a variable on the command line. If the variable is not set, it's not going to run the script. We're going to run it against Nikto, and then we're going to run it against Derby. And for Derby, we're just using a common uh, word list. So let's do this. We're going to do dot slash web enum. I'm going to do 192.168.1.173 on port 10,000, right? All right, so it's running through. And right now we're seeing stuff about Python being outdated, uh, simple HTTP uh, server running. And here's an interesting. So there's a path called slash bin on the server. Uh, it says it may be a possible system shell. So it's something we can look at. And then uh, Jerby comes back with the same information. <coughs> so you can see it found that bin directory. So we're gonna right click here, open link. Interesting. So that link brings us to a, uh, a binary directory or, um, and in that binary directory, there's a brainpan.exe file. So let's copy that file. Okay, we're going to copy this file. 
And we're going to come back over to our RVM here. We're going to do a wget. And we're going to download this file. All right. Let's see what type of file this is. So it's a Windows executable file. So we're running on Linux, and behind our Linux is a Mac, so it's going to be kind of interesting running it. But there's a tool we can use called Wine. Wine will let us uh, execute this file locally. All right, so let's take a look at this file. So we ran file on it. When realize it's a Windows file, it is can possibly execute it with Wine. Let's run strings against it as well, see what else we can find out about this file. Sometimes in these type of files, you might find the password or some other comments or something that help make sense about what it is, what we can do with it, <clears throat> or possibly find some other vulnerabilities in it. So let's make this a little bit easier for us. Let's try run strings, string dump. Let's type it a grep. And let's look for a standard coding defect, such as like a uh, stir string, stir copy. Um, see if we can find any uh, security vulnerabilities. So it looks like they have um, string copy, stir copy. And what happens here is basically this variable will take data and will not uh, check the buffer size, will not validate or uh, uh, make sure that it's the correct buffer. And what usually happens in these type of scenarios is you can create a buffer overflow where you can fill that uh, buffer up and basically crash it, taking control of uh, the program to execute your own code. So let's run this program and see actually what the program is and maybe get a little bit more idea or our next steps of where we got to go. Uh, we know there's at least some vulnerable code in here that we can look at. Maybe we can see what the inputs are that they're going to ask us for, and uh, we can try from there. So why bring them? Okay. So it's starting up, and look at this. It has created a connection on 9999 which is the BIS port that we found in our MMAP scan. Um, so let's come over to this other screen. Let's do a uh, netcat. Uh, we're going to netcat to our local host on port 9999. Interesting. So we get BrainPan. Welcome to BrainPan. Enter the password. So if we enter a password, we get access denied. So we come back over here to our other screen. We can see that we are get reply a copied one bytes to the buffer so there is a buffer that is copying our data into so there is a possibility that we can use this application to create a buffer overflow and maybe insert our own payload to get a shell back but now that we know this let's take a look at the actual server uh, on that port to see if it's the same application I'm assuming it is based on the same port here, based on the Veracode image. To me, it's telling me that there is some type of buffer overflow overflow within the application. Uh, a lot of that stuff's pushing you towards that thought process based on the data that you're seeing within this VM. And lo and behold, if we connect to the server, the BrainPan uh, VM on 9999, we have the same exact application. So now we can actually do some development of a buffer overflow on our local machine and then actually exploit the remote machine once we figure out all the values we need and actually do the testing and write the code ourselves. So kills my connection. All right, so first thing we're gonna wanna look at doing is we're gonna wanna create a fuzzer uh, or manually copy to figure out where, uh, if we can actually crash the buffer. So one of the easiest things I've seen uh, looking online, I am not an uh, expert at buffer overflows or anything like that, but uh, as I've gone through my OSCP and some other uh, online classes, they all use the similar skeleton file to create buffers for fuzzing or uh, create a fuzzer for fuzzing. So I have on my machine here a file I call fuzzpy. And what I've done in here, basically I create a Python script that will fill the buffer with capital A's. So that will, that's what will give us an X41 um, at 100 at a time. So we're going to start at 100 and then we're going to go up to basically 1,000. 
And then as every time we go up, we're gonna increment by a hundred. So 100, next 10 will be 200, next 10 will be 300, so on and so forth. As we go through, we're gonna track how many uh, bytes we have sent uh, to the buffer. And basically, if it crashes, uh, we error out properly, right? So we're gonna connect to local host on that port. So right now, our application is still running over here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna save our fuzzer. We're gonna do Python fuzz. I probably could just do dot slash fuzz, but we'll go Python fuzz. And you can see that we crashed the buffer or crashed the application. We overfilled the buffer. Um, close. Basically that's going to show all the details over here on the screen. And what we can see is we have all our capital A's right here filling into the buffer. And it looks like the last successful was around 602 bytes was sent to the buffer before we had a crash. Now we need to find the exact amount of bytes um, that we can send to the buffer before it crashes. And to do that, so basically to do that, we can use a tool called Padding Create. It's a uh, Ruby module built into Metasploit. Um, what we're going to do is actually is we're going to do that in our next video. I'm going to work on uh, figuring out the exact buffer size we need to create the crash. And once we figure out how to create the crash, we're going to start figuring out how we can actually build up our, uh, our exploit around that to get our payload into it, taking over the AIP uh, registers, and we'll walk through Ali Debug or another debugger to do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to end this video. Um, I have some stuff I need to do around the house, and we'll continue on during my next video. Thanks.